And uh, saan man yung kanta? With the help of internet tools po yun ha. Hindi po yun manumano na ano. <laughs> And uh, sige po, I would like to ask you to join me in prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you God for this uh, another opportunity na you have given us all to be here and uh, once again to learn from you. Lord, uh, just like what Genesis has prayed for, uh, whatever we will be learning tonight, Lord God, will not just stay in our heads, but uh, let it go down to our hearts and cause uh, a stir in our hearts and uh, let it affect our lives, Lord God, and uh, cause our lives to be glorifying to your name. And Father, I pray, God, na you would touch our hearts tonight and make us understand and learn from from the lesson that we will be learning tonight from God, but make us able to see the love of Paul and Barnabas for the people, for the Gentiles, and even for the Jews, Lord God, as they share the gospel. Lord, give us the same wisdom that they had, understanding that without Christ, we, are, we have no hope. Lord, cause us even, Lord God, to understand deeper that reality is spirituality. What we have now here on earth is temporary, our jobs and everything else, Lord God. But at the end of the day, we are clay pots that you are using, Lord God, as instruments for you to, to call, to draw people to Christ. So I pray, Lord God, that you would touch our mind as well and make us really understand that Without Christ, there is just darkness. And Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you would also instill not only the understanding and the love for others, but instill, Lord God, this um, sincerity in our hearts that we indeed are followers of Christ. And let this declaration be evident in our lives, Lord God, as we uh, zealously and boldly reach out others and share and share the good news of Jesus. For we know, Lord God, and we pray that you would always remind us that there's only one name given under heaven by which we must be saved, and that is only the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, once again, we ask for the Holy Spirit to work in us, to lead us, and to take charge as we tackle the passage that you have given us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, again, po, ito po yung ating lesson. Uh, we will proceed. Now, finally, we've uh, completed 13 chapters of Acts in more around two years and a half, right? Because we're doing it verse by verse. So I hope that you have learned as much as I have learned as we have uh, studied nitong Acts, mga uh, Acts ng Apostles or Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. So now, ang pag po natin is chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. I was actually contemplating kung ituloy ko ba sa 10 no, ang verses 1 to 10. But then, nakikita ko na through, through the pag-outline ng chapter 14, I think it is wise that we stop at 7 and then next na yung 10 onwards. Okay, so. Before we dive in sa verse 14, uh, chapter 14, let's just refresh our mind dito from mga last few verses ng 13. So, verse 47, it says, For so the Lord has commanded us, I have placed you as a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the end of the earth. So, this is part of Paul's preaching, right? And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was being spread through the whole region but the Jews incited the God-fearing women of prominence and the leading men of the city and instigated a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their district. But having shaken off the dust of their feet against them, they went to Iconium and the disciples were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Now, pag po natin is uh, Paul and Barnabas at, uh, in our Iconium or at Iconium. So ito po yung uh, verses says, now it happened that in Iconium, they entered the synagogue of the Jews together and spoke in such a manner that a large number of people believed, both of Jews and of Greeks. But the unbelieving Jews instigated and embittered 
the minds of the Gentiles against the brothers. Therefore, they spent a long time there speaking boldly with reliance upon the Lord, who was testifying to the word of his grace, granting that signs and wonders be done through their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. And when an attempt was made by both the Gentiles and the Jews with their rulers to mistreat and to stone them, they became aware of it and fled to the cities of Lycania, Lystra, and Derbe, and the surrounding region. And they were, and they there they continued to proclaim the gospel. So, as a background, remember <clears throat> they were here in the Syria and Antioch, right? This is the first Gentile church that was established. And Paul and Barnabas, there were five leaders there, and two of them were Paul and Barnabas. Then Alana po natin, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Paul and Barnabas. Kasi my mission sila, dalawa. So from here, they went to where? Cyprus. And then in Cyprus, naalala niyo, sa, sa Paphos, na, na encounter nila si Bar Jesus. And then and the proconsul. And then the proconsul also, when uh, Paul preached, believed. And from there, Paphos, they went to where? Ang kung gusto nilang puntahan was another Antioch which was Pisidian Antioch, di ba? So this is Syrian Antioch, and that is Pisidian Antioch. And this is part of Galatia, this part here. So from Cyprus, they went here through Perga, and then all the way to Antioch. At yung binasa natin sa last verses ng chapter 13, it happened in Antioch. So what happened? When they reached Antioch, ano nangyari? As custom ni Paul, pupunta, pumunta siya kagad sa where? Synagogue. No, pumunta siya sa synagogue and preach. Uh, pumunta siya doon and there was, of course, the usual service. And after noon, the usual worship, after noon, they were invited to speak. And Paul spoke. And when he spoke, ano nangyari? Many believe and many were so amazed and some of them were saying, uh, we're hoping that Paul would speak again the next week, the next Sabbath. Diba? So, and then we learned that all throughout the week, they were busy. They were busy. Paul and Barnabas, they, they continued teaching and preaching. And on the next week, puno na, sabi nga ng scripture, the whole city were there waiting for them, waiting to hear them. But then, as usual, pag mga ganun, ano nangyari? There was jealousy from the uh, unbelieving Jews or yung mga Jews nandun na hindi naniwala sa kanila and even uh, contended with them and even called them uh, blas blasphemers. And from there, so ito yung nakita natin dito. So they left, no? and they they shaken off the dust of their feet against them, and they went to Iconium. So from Pisidia, Pisidian Antioch, they went to Iconium, which is here. So they were here, going there, then pumunta Iconium, and then sa, then, sa pag natin next time, they went to uh, Lystra and Derby, and then all the way back. So, for now, ito po yung pag-aaratin. So, nakuha po niyo yung background. So, they were there because they were about to kill to kill them, the two of them, di ba? Uh, since many believe, many Gentiles believe, ang ginawa ng mga Jews doon na hindi naniwala, they talk to the women na may influence. Na para kausapin, of course, yung mga husbands nila. And they instigated and they somehow cause others uh, to, to be angry or to be uh, uh, hateful sa kanilang dalawa, which actually caused them to leave the place. At pumunta sila dito sa Iconium. Now let's proceed sa Iconium. So now it happened that in Iconium, of course mga keywords city natin, they entered the synagogue of the Jews together and spoke in such a manner that a large number of people believed and both Jews and Greeks. So makikita natin dito from sa seven verses and even the previous verses, let's you can step back and learn from the lives of Paul and Barnabas. Na imagine every, wherever they go, there's always this commotion, there's always this chaos, and usually uh, before leaving, the city is divided or por polarized. Some believe, some don't. No? So dalawang, dalawang faction na lang, yung mga believers at unbelievers. At makikita mo yung boldness nila. Uh, because they understood that there's no other salvation na in offer, but only through Jesus Christ. 
And that is why it's called the good news, because they've been waiting for this uh, Messiah, and finally the Messiah came. And uh, they understood, especially see Paul, um, yung background, he was a, a student of Gamaliel, di ba? And of course, well versed as Old Testament. And he understood na their God is the true God. Walang ibang God, kundi yung si Yahweh. Of course, there were a lot of paganism before at that time, sa time nila. However, he was so sure. And when Christ encountered him sa, on his way to Damascus, he understood that Jesus indeed was the Messiah and, uh, and the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And that is why may kita lang natin yung uh, zeal ni Paul sa pag-share ng gospel. And even the rest of the apostles, 11 of them were martyred. No, no, not one of them na nirenounce nila yung faith because they knew and they were so sure because they encountered Jesus, the living and the resurrected Jesus. So for us, we don't have to encounter the same because from, from the time of Pentecost, the moment a person is saved, the Holy Spirit has been dwelling in us uh, and it's still dwelling in us. Actually, the trying God is dwelling in us. And what I'm trying to say here is the same spirit that was in Paul and Barnabas is in each and every one of us. So we don't have any excuse to say they are okay. They were at that time, their purposes, they can do miracles because for a certain time, then that's for a purpose. But at the end of the day, tulad nga ni Elijah, sabi ni James about Elijah, at the end of the day, Elijah was a man just like us, indwelt by the Holy Spirit. So I hope na as we learn sa Acts, na may kita natin yung zeal ng mga apostles and their love for others. Understanding na, okay, the, like I always say, na yung mga trabaho natin, resources natin, it's actually a blessing from the Lord for us to be able to continue in the real work, which is ministry. So, let's proceed. So now it happened in Iconium. So ano yung Iconium? Which, anong yung place na yun? Iconium, uh, may kita natin dito, they're going farther actually from the city. Okay. Let's say Pisidia is a big city and then pumunta sa Iconium. Parang you're going away, you're going out kung nasa Cebu pa. If you're in Cebu City, you're going away to the northern part or the southern part ng uh, probinsya, maliliit na mga prov provinces. Here, may kita natin uh, according to uh, ko mga commentaries na ang uh, Iconium, especially sa Listra, and then sa Derby, uh, sa Iconium, may synagogue pa. But sa Listra, wala na. No? So, may kita natin that they're going farther from the city. Ang ibig sabihin nun, it be nagiging more dangerous yung lives nila. Kasi the farther they get, the less order there, there is sa, sa city. Kasi kung nasa main city ka, of course, it's ruled by the Roman Empire. May order, may law, may sinusunod, may takot tumata. Pero sa mga malalayo na, wala na. So there are so many bandits and all that. Okay, let's go back. So Iconium, a cultural melting pot of native regions, so mga native doon, and even John MacArthur sinabi niya na mga half uh, civilized, half civilized regions, and may mga Greek, these are the wise ones, yung mga Jews or from Israel, you know, and Roman colonists, and, mo and located 80 miles south of Pisidia and Andrew. Now, itong mga Roman colonists, mix ng mga current na nagsiserve sa, sa government, and those retired Romans na hindi na bumalik sa Rome, and they settled there. So you can just imagine sa ang, ang lugar na yon na iba-ibang kultura. And of course, ang naghahari-hari dyan, itong mga Roman mga soldiers and even the retired ones. So it's not a safe place to go. It's, 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 it's somehow may kita mo na hindi siya tourist spot. No? Hindi siya magandang puntahan ng mga somebody who is not from there. However, because of the leading of the Holy Spirit, pumunta sila dun. So, they fled actually from Pisidian Antioch. So, here, now it happened that in Iconium, they entered the synagogue of the Jews. So, as always, Paul, pinuputahan niya yung synagogue. Why? Because if he goes straight to the Gentiles, and if the Gentiles believe, hindi naman siya makapunta sa synagogue. 
because of the hatred between the Gentiles and the Jews. No? Somehow, kung ano man yung paniniwalaan ng Gentiles, the Jews will never believe kung nauna sa kanila. Kaya it's God's structure na unahin yung Jews. Because when the Jews believe, and Gentiles, they're open na maniwala kaysa mga Jews. So this is the way Paul na ginagawa niya every time he goes to a place. So he spoke in such a manner. So he went to the synagogue. And again, makikita natin na when he went to the synagogue, it is their custom na pag may bisita, lalo na somebody like Paul who's known, ay ni-invite nila to speak. Just like what happened sa Pisidia ng Antioch, di ba? Na after ng service or worship nila, tinawag si Paul, would you like to exhort? Do you have, do you have any exhortation for us? So here, in the same way, nung pumunta sila doon, of course, yung mga tao sa Iconium, sa Sinagog Iconium, hindi naman nila alam na Paul and Barnabas left sa Pisidia na they were actually, they left because of the animosity ng mga tao doon. So when they went there, we assume, according to the commentaries, na yun din yung nangyari. So they attended the synagogue, and there was worship. Pagkatapos ng worship, ay it is a custom ng mga leader, leaders doon na they would invite people, you know, to, lalo na yung mga rabbi, to speak. So they spoke. So and spoke in such a manner that a large number of people believe, both Jews and of Greeks. So imagine, ang, ang, ang principle, It was the first time they heard about such preaching, about declaring the gospel, about declaring the Messiah. Because before this, all they heard about is, of course, yung mga Old Testament. Quotation ng mga verses and all. Here, Paul spoke about salvation, about Jesus Christ. And many believe, and a large number of people believe, both Jews and Greeks. So what can we see here? Spoke in such a manner So there's an, a way of speaking na many believe. And we can see na spoke in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because why? Because only in the power of the Holy Spirit, people believe. As the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. We know that, right? The gospel is foolishness. Well, you've tried it. You've shared the gospel. At, uh, if it's not your time, if, if ever my time and sila na dumating, Now they will be drawn to Jesus by the Father. If it's not their time yet, the gospel is foolishness. Foolishness to those who are perishing. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So you share the same gospel, iba-ibang reaction. Those who are perishing and those who are being saved. No. It is power to those who are being saved but it's stupidity or foolishness to those perishing. So we can see here na ang manner of speaking or preaching ni Paul or whoever was preaching, I think both of them, it was empowered by the Holy Spirit because many believe. Many believe. There was an effectual call. There was an internal call. When we share the gospel, we call it external call. We are calling people externally. But the internal call is what happens inside. Diba? Have you tried sharing the gospel na the person just listens and tears just start rolling the cheeks without even speaking a word. And from then on, tuloy-tuloy na yung pag-grow niya. That was an in, that's an internal call. So here, makikita natin na they spoke in the power of the Holy Spirit. What else? Uh, both Jews and Greeks. So, Jews and Gentiles. So, Greeks actually is another term they use for those people who speak Greek. Mga Gentiles. Uh, not only Jews and Greeks and proselyte Gentiles and or the God-fearers. So, may kita natin, since it's a mixed culture place, iba-ibang mga klase mga tao dun, so there could be Jews, may mga proselyte na mga Gentiles, ibig sabihin, they adapted fully, no? yung sistema ng Judaism. And there, the, though, there are mga God-fearers, yung mga 50-50, na hindi pa nag-commit fully. So, Jews and Gentiles. <clears throat> Verse 2, But the unbelieving Jews instigated and embittered the minds of the Gentiles against the brothers. So, it's the same group of people, the unbelieving Jews. The same dun sa Pisidia, sa Antioch, the unbelieving Jews din eh, yung mga nag-instigate, no, yung nag 
poison ng mind ng iba. So here, but the unbelieving Jews instigated and embittered the minds of the Gentiles against the brothers. So many believe, and then my unbelieving Jews na nag-instigate na sila yung nag-poison ng mind. So sino yung mga unbelieving Jews? It is the distinguishing feature of nearly all the persecutions in the Acts that they originated in the hostility of the Jews. So may kita natin from Acts, from the time of Pentecost, and when they started preaching, lahat ng mga persecution nila actually came from the Jews. Right? So, again, here, the unbelieving Jews, wala na tayong nakita unbelieving Gentiles. Kasi unbelievers naman sila most of, pero walang hostility, wala tayong nakikita hostility. Because they, somehow, uh, knowing Paul, at kilala nila si Paul, most likely mga Gentiles, which at that time mostly are second-class citizens, did not have the courage to persecute the Jews. Kasi si Paul and Bar Barnabas were, uh, si Paul, especially Paul is a Jew. Hmm? And Barnabas is somehow uh, coming from the Levite line, but grew up in, not in Israel, kaya may property nga siya. So it is the distinguishing feature of nearly all persecutions in the Acts that they originated in the hostility of the Jews. What else? Embittered the minds of the Gentiles. Keyword, embittered kaku, to inflict misery. So how, are, how did they inflict misery sa mind ng mga tao na caused them to hate Paul and Barnabas? So it is an ill treatment or to harm or injure. Here, it implies not only an ill disposition aroused towards the brethren, so it's not only them causing the, the unbeliever or uh, the, the Gentiles na magalit no, kay Paul and Barnabas, but here, but injury also done to the minds in which the feeling was stirred up. So what does it mean? So there's an injury done to the mind of those people that stirred up uh, their feeling to, to hatred, kay, uh, to anger kay Paul and Barnabas. So, we don't know exactly kung ano yung words na sinabi nila na that caused the, na nagbago yung iba ng isip na at nagalit kay Paul. But it's always the unbelieving Jews that instigates chaos o gulo no? sa after ng preaching usually ng mga apostles. Verse 3. So, therefore, so here, look at this. But the unbelieving Jews instigated and embittered the minds of the Gentiles against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas, they spoke, many believed, and then the unbelieving Jews uh, poisoned the mind or caused injury to the mind of the, the Gentiles uh, para magalit sa kanila. But here, understanding that here there's opposition already. My opposition na kay Paul and Barnabas here, this time, eh, na from uh, uh, instigated by the unbelieving Jews. But look at the next word. No. Therefore, they spent a long time there speaking boldly with reliance upon the Lord who was testifying to the word of His grace, granting that signs and wonders be done through their hands. So why I underline therefore? Because it's a very important word. So example, ikaw yung nasa position ni Paul and Barnabas. You were preaching, and pagkatapos ng preaching mo, you saw that many believed, and then you also learned that there are people objecting your preaching. And not only objecting, but even angry sa preaching mo. So what, how, and, and, and ito nga yung, it's so admirable na in spite of understanding or knowing my objection, therefore, ang next word eh. And because of that, instead of in spite of, right, therefore, not in spite of, but therefore. Ibig sabihin, but because of their uh, uh, opposition, ito yung ginawa nila. Because my opposition, they spent a long time there speaking boldly. So we have to learn from this because when we share the gospel, there are only two reactions, rejection or opposition or acceptance. But may kita natin here, here na it's because my acceptance they even stayed long. Uh, my my uh, my rejection or my opposition. They even stayed. So, yung opposition caused them even to spend a long time there. So we should learn from it now because the moment na my opposition or my persecution or my objection when we share the gospel, 
at magba-back off ka, wala kang magawa, wala, there's nothing, there's nothing that you will be able to accomplish. Kasi there's always opposition. There's always opposition because the world is hostile. No one seeks God. No one is righteous. And you're, you're presenting the Lord. You should always expect objection or rejection. And the, the scripture is saying, when there's objection, make it the fuel for you to go on. Instead of back off. Yan ang nakikita niyo po yung nakikita ko. Na because of my opposition, therefore, ang next word. It's because of that opposition, they spent a long time there speaking boldly with reliance on the Lord. Instead of leaving the place and backing off, saying, ah, uh, hindi successful ang preaching doon. They stayed long time. So a demonstration of zeal and boldness for the gospel. And long time, when you look at the word long time, how long is a long time? So this can hardly be understood as involving a stay of less than several months, during which Paul and Barnabas, as before, were working for their livelihood. So they stayed there and even have their own work to be able to continue sharing the gospel. Knowing that there's opposition brewing or cooking within the city against them. So yun, mahi natin yung boldness nila. So according to John MacArthur, when you say long time, this word means either one month, not less than a month, two, three years. That's the gap. So they could have stayed maybe a year and continued preaching. And the reason why they stayed, unlike Pisidia, na mabilis ang sila dun eh. But here, they stayed longer. Ang, ang opposition kasi sa Pisidia was right there and then. Dito, there was an opposition, but the opposition was instigated by the unbelie unbelieving Jews. Pinupoison nila yung mind ng mga tao. There was no, wala kang makita violence kaagad. Kaya they stayed for a while, they stayed, continued preaching boldly, knowing that the hatred or anger ng mga tao sa kanila is growing. So, one month of three years. So the result of staying, first, a long stay was necessary that by the words of the apostles and by the mighty deeds following wherewith God confirmed them, the faith of the new converts might be fully established before the apostles departed. So now, mahikita natin dito na because they learned that there's opposition, they stayed. Why? Tanatakot sila na baka yung mga bagong convert ay hindi magpatuloy. Kasi nga may mga opposition. May nag-i-instigate nag ng mga mind nila. So they were there somehow to protect them and continue teaching them. So they did not only preach, but they taught. So nag-preach sila. Some were saved. They continued teaching them to establish. And that's what we should do. When you share the gospel, at you see positive re result as a work of the Holy Spirit, we should follow through and teach the doctrines sa mga taong nito. And that's what they did yung dalawa. So they stayed there. Could be a year, could be two years, could be three years. They stayed there. So they spent a long time there speaking boldly with reliance upon the Lord. So secondly, ang result ng pagstay nila dun, there came about a division among the people, the Christians and non-Christians became distinctly marked parties. So as they continued preaching, lalong dumadami yung nagiging clear na yung line, yung polarization. Unbili uh, naniniwala at hindi naniniwala. So as they continued, maybe clarifying, maybe some people were instigated and they confronted them and they clarified kung ano yung mga doctrines that they were teaching and some believe and some didn't. So, yun ang result. What else? Speaking boldly with reliance upon the Lord. So they were speaking boldly knowing na kahit may opposition, not only from the people, from the, now, uh, mahikita mo ang opposition, from the Jews and the Gentiles na eh. Kasi the, the unbelieving Jews instigated the Gentiles. So, maraming naniwala, maraming hindi, and from those people na hindi naniwala, who did not accept the Lord Jesus Christ, who did not give their lives to Christ, many of them are, of course, like I said, na yung hatred nila is brewing against Paul and Barnabas because of the unbelieving Jews that they instigated. 
So, and in spite of that, knowing kahit may, alam nilang may opposition and my animosity that is growing or increasing against them sa city, they continued speaking boldly. They never backed down. They continued speaking boldly. Kahit alam nilang may, may against them. Because they relied on the Lord. Kung ikaw siguro si Paul, in-encounter ka ng Panginoon sa on your way to the Damascus, you would maybe, we don't know, you would have the same zeal, the same faith. Okay? So speaking boldly with reliance upon the Lord, because he's so sure, my God is the real God. So the boldness consisted, as the context shows, of a full declaration of the grace of God. Boldness brought out or came from the faith upon the Lord. Of course, there's boldness when there's faith. There's no faith. There, you can never find someone bold in speaking about something na wala siyang faith on that something or on that someone. Okay. Even sa mga offices natin, di ba? When you know that your principle or your idea is correct and you believe in it, you will fight for it. But kung ikaw mismo ay 50-50 sa idea mo, you will not stand up. Baka you would just be embarrassed in the end. But here, they are so sure and they're so in love with the Lord Jesus Christ that even this, this kind of uh, opposition or persecution, they remained steadfast and bold in preaching. Full confidence in God's power through the gospel. So they relied on the power of the Lord. Understanding who God is, the sovereignty of God, then my, you can just imagine the boldness of Barnabas and Paul. So what else? So, with reliance upon the Lord, who was testifying to the word of His grace, granting that signs and wonders be done through their hand. Here, you're saying, speaking boldly with reliance upon the Lord, the Lord, who, speaking about the Lord, who was testifying to the word of His grace, how? By granting that signs and wonders be done through their hands. So this is a confirmation. Granting the signs and wonders. Acts of such divine power confirm that Paul and Barnabas spoke for God. So if there are five people speaking about the same thing, how would you know kung sino yung totoo? During that time, it was called for the apostles to perform miracles and wonders. For people to believe na itong mga taong to really came from God. So, that's the point here. Granting that signs and it was God who's granting them the, the apostles or Paul and Barnabas to be able to perform signs and wonders. To confirm what they preach for people to be established sa kanilang faith. Kaya ngayon, makikita mo din na People are taking advantage of the ignorant. They do some tricks to fool these people. And of course, they're just after your money. Kasi, ignorant eh. Hindi alam na itong mga signs and wonders, actually, for a certain period of time. Kasi nga, that was the start of the explosion of the church, of the spreading of the gospel. And there were so many people na, of course, marami sa mga Gentiles, uh, look up sa mga Jews. Knowing so Judaism as a system itself, so which is established. At may kita mo din yung mga wonders na ginawa ng Panginoon doon. But sa, of course, yun, sa, sa time pa lang ni Moses, no? sa ten plagues, and so many things, so many miracles na ginawa ng Panginoon to establish yung Judaism. But here, at this time, the Lord has to do something uh, to give the apostles the power to perform signs and wonders for people to believe na what the Judaism was expecting, was waiting for, the Messiah, has already come. So, here. So, signs point to the power of God behind the miracles. Kaya nga tinatawag na sign. Diba, meron tayong makikita ng sign? Ang mga sign points to something. And these are the purposes of the signs na ginawa, ng mga miracles na ginawa ng mga apostles back then. To point to Jesus Christ. Marvels have no value unless they point to God and His truth. 
wonder. So, of course, this is the amazement people experience when witnessing supernatural works of God, yung mga signs. When people see the miracles that performed by the, the apostles, they wonder. Both were often done by the Holy Spirit through the apostles and their associates. Alam po natin to, no? na mga apostles and some of their friends, like Philip, I know, na mga kasama nila, perform, but not all of them, to authenticate them as messengers of God's truth. So the purpose of signs and wonders is the sign, the miracles, is to point to Jesus Christ, to point to God. But for the but the multitude of the city was divided. So may kita natin, many believe, and then the unbelieving Jews instigated to cause the division. So now, uh, the multitude of the city was divided, and some sided with the Jews, and some with the apostles. So how many people were there? Barnabas and Paul. Pero sino yung nirecognize natin as apostle? Si Paul, di ba? There are only 12 apostles plus one. So it was 12. Nawala si Judas. Matthias replaced Judas. So 12 plus one. Si, Apo, si Paul. So 13 lang. But how come it's mentioned here as apostles plural? Nadalawa lang naman sila, si Barnabas and Paul. Apostles, the Greek word is apostolos. Uh, to commission or to send forth. Someone sent or commissioned focusing on their authority as extending from the sender. So, somebody who is sent with the authority of the sender. Like mga ambassadors, di ba? They have the, the authority. They represent the country even. So, apostolos or apostle is used for the 12 men Christ sent forth as his authorized servants or spokesmen. And it is also applied to men other than the 12 like Barnabas, Andronicus, Junius, and Paul. Now, what's the difference? Barnabas was not an apostle in the same sense as Paul and the twelve, since he was not an eyewitness of the resurrected Christ. So that's the first criteria. Eyewitness of the resurrected Christ. Nor had he been called by him. Had he been called by him. So, See, Barnabas was not personally called by Jesus Christ. Paul was by Damascus. And he was also a witness of the resurrected Christ. Where? In Damascus, on the, on the way to Damascus. Right? See, Barnabas, he was not. However, why apostles John? No. The verb means to send. The twelve and Paul were apostles of Christ. While Barnabas and others, Nito, Andronicus and Junius, were messengers of the churches. So apostolos has two meanings. The apostles of Christ or the apostles or the messengers. The messengers of the churches. So here, I think this is best translated as the messengers. Kasi dalawa. One is a messenger of the church and one is the messenger is an apostle of Christ. But both of them are messengers. Both of them were sent. Remember, the Holy Spirit called them, now set apart Paul and Barnabas for me, and they were sent. Second Corinthians 8.23 As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker among you. As for our brothers, they are messengers. This word here is apostolos. They are messengers of the churches. A glory to Christ. Apostolos is small a. When you say Capital A or uppercase A is the apostles of Christ. Yung 12 plus 1 is Paul. But pag small A, apostolos, messenger from the church. Philippians 2.25 But I regard it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your apostolos, your messenger and minister to my need. Kuha nyo difference? So, a messenger and the apostle of Christ or the messengers of the church. 2 Corinthians 11.13 For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. So, they are apostles of Christ and they are just messengers of the church. Tulad ng the word diakonos. 
uh, deacons, servant. So, masabi natin that all believers are servants. So, all believers are diaconous. But in another sense, not all believers are deacons. You got the point? But lahat ng mga believers are servants, but not lahat ay deacons. So, but they're using the same word, diaconous. Verse Thessalonians 2.6, Not nor seeking glory from men, either from you or from others, even though as apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you. So it's always clear na pag sinabi apostles of Christ, they're pertaining to one of the 12 plus one or the 13. So the signs of a true apostle were worked out among you with all perseverance by signs and wonders and miracles. So not all of them, but almost all of them perform signs and wonders. Verse 5, And when an attempt was made by both Gentiles and the Jews with their rulers to mistreat and to stone them. So remember the, the opposition or the anger started after their pre first preaching. And then the text says they stayed for a long time. So wh while they're staying for a long time, they were teaching, they were preaching, yung anger also is growing. So dumating na yung point na they could not just contain their anger anymore. They have to do something. No? So and when an attempt was made, so and when an attempt was made, this is the... The, the, the anger reached the apex of the brewing anger towards the apostles that began when they first preached the gospel. So it has been a long time na parang niluluto lang. Now it's boiling. So this was the time na hindi na nila matolerate yung teachings ni Paul and Barnabas. So by both the Gentiles and the Jews, now both the Gentiles and the Jews na yung kalaban nila, with their rulers to mistreat and to stone them. The word mistreat actually is violent or like a rush or an urge to to physically harm them. So hindi lang siya in word na usual in the experience nila at the beginning before Paul, actually before Saul actually ravaged the church and the experience nila was a few beatings and uh, imprisonment. But when Saul started killing Stephen, and yun na yung lumalala na yung persecution until eventually Jesus Christ encountered Paul. Here, makita natin na dalawa na yung kalaban na Gentiles and Jews and they were about to stone them. So, this proves that their Jewish opponents were the instigators since stoning was a Jewish form of, Jewish form of execution. So, again, makita natin na yung attempt was made by the both Jews and Gentiles ang naglilid pa rin nito, mga Jews. Kasi yung practice na stoning is practice lang ng Jews. It's their way of executing someone who is what? A blasphemer. Execution usually for blasphemy against God. So may maintindihan natin that they're calling Barnabas and Paul as blasphemers. As false teachers. Kasi they want to kill them by stoning. So, what happened to their boldness now? We have to be wise. They were bold, knowing there was opposition, but they were able to somehow always test the water kung kaya pa ba. And we go on preaching and teaching. So, the verb expresses vicious insult and outrage. Itong mistreat na verb na yan. So, it was not only like, you know, a small mistreatment. Hindi. So Acts 7, 58, 59. And when they had driven him out of the city, sino to? Naalala nyo? Acts 7? Stephen. And when they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him, and the witnesses laid aside their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. They went on stoning Stephen as he was calling out and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Do you think at this time that they were about to stone them naalala ni Paul yung ginawa niya kay Stephen? Definitely. No? Ni-remind siya ng Panginoon. At sabi nga ng Panginoon, I have, I'll have set you apart to suffer for the gospel. Di ba? So for sure at this time, naalala niya yung ginawa niya kay Stephen. So, like Stephen, 
They stoned him, they killed him for blasphemy. Again, sa kanila ay the table is turned upside down. Na sila din yung tinatawag. Nadamay si Barnabas <laughs> ng blasphemy. <laughs> so verse 6, they became aware of it and fled. So at first they were aware that there was opposition. There was a brewing anger. But they boldly continue preaching the gospel. And here, sabi nga, may isang preacher, did they chicken out? No, they were wise. So they became aware of it and fled to the cities of Lycaonia, Lystra, and Derby, and the surrounding region. And there they continued to proclaim the gospel. So they were kicked out of the city or they ran out from that city because of the gospel. And 18 miles, actually, and this time from Pisidia, and uh, anong Iconium and Lystra, it's just 18 miles. Pagdating nila doon, anong ginawa nila? Preach the gospel. Therefore, kulang na sabihin eh. Therefore, they preach the gospel. Because there was an attempt to kill them, therefore, they went and preached the gospel. So we should learn from this. But we should also learn from them to be wise. Kung kailan, dapat when to shut your mouth, want to speak. So they became aware of it and fled. They were wise to discern the leading of the Holy Spirit that it was time for them to leave. Because a living, bold preacher is much better than a dead preacher. Diba? Kung nagstay sila doon, papatayin sila. So, what's the point? Yes, you're bold, but you have to be wise. Cities of Lyconia and Lystra and Derby. So, Lyconia <coughs> was a district in the Roman province of Galatia. So, it's still part of Galatia. Lystra was about 18 miles from Iconium and was the home of Lois. Remember? Lois? Lois, Eunice, and Timothy. No? Si Timothy, ang nanay niya si Eunice. Ang, yang, ang kanyang grandmother, si Lois. No? So they were Christians, right? No. Si Timothy is a disciple of Paul. So Luke mentions no synagogue in connection with Lystra. And since Paul began his ministry there by preaching to the crowd, it likely had a small Jewish population Derby was about 40 miles southeast of Lystra. So we will be talking about Lystra and Derby next time. But here, the seven verses I hope you've learned uh, from the life of Paul and Barnabas on how zealous they were in preaching the gospel. So whenever they encounter opposition, therefore they preach more. When they left Pisidia, when they reached Iconium, what did they do? Preach. They left Iconium because there was a threat of the sa uh, nila. They reached Lystra. They preach. So wherever you go, so we are all missionaries. Missionary ka sa neighbor mo, missionary ka sa office mates mo, or you're a missionary to go somewhere else. But at the end of the day, we're all missionaries. Like Paul. So makikita natin si Paul and Barnabas Kahit saan sila nililid ng Holy Spirit, they preach boldly. So summary. In Iconium, Paul and Barnabas preach in the synagogue, leading many Jews and Greeks to believe in their message. However, some unbelieving Jews incited hostility among the Gentiles against the apostles. Despite the opposition they faced, Paul and Barnabas boldly relied on the Lord who confirmed their message through signs and wonders. So the Lord confirmed the message that they indeed were from God. This resulted in a division within the city with people taking sides either with the Jews or with the apostles. When a plot against them was uncovered, Paul and Barnabas fled to the surrounding regions of Lycaonia, Lystra, and Derby, where they continued to preach the gospel. But just a reminder ni yung gospel. May that in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, I think. 
it is uh, good news. Ibig sabihin ng gospel, the Greek word is evangelion, meaning good news. So why is it a good news? Because we're all bad news. <laughs> because the Bible says, Romans 8, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So walang perfect, we're all sinners. Even kids are sinners. Romans 6, 23, but the wages of sin is death. So what you're earning because of your sin is death, is eternal death in hell. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So there's the good news. It's bad news because we're sinners and we're on our way to hell. But the good news is Jesus Christ paid for those sins. Because we can't pay for those sins. So Jesus Christ paid for our sins. And whoever, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only God and Son, Jesus Christ, when the word gave, died for us, that whoever believes in, the, the word believes in, whoever gives his life or her life to Christ shall not perish but have eternal life. So that's the good news. Now conclusion. So the gospel brings belief and transformation. It's only the gospel. Even amid opposition, like Paul and Barnabas, let us boldly rely on God. So pray before you pre preach. Breath prayers, long prayers, with open eyes, with closed eyes. Rely on the Holy Spirit as you share the gospel. You speak for God as we are all ambassadors for Christ. Persevere in sharing the gospel. Naalala niyo yung sermon last, last, last Friday? One of the qualities or characteristic of an effective minister, minister, persevere. You don't stop, you go on. At makikita natin yung qualities niyan kay Paul and Barnabas. No? For us, sasabihin natin, because of the persecution, I left. Sa kanila, because of the persecution, they continued preaching. No? So that's what we should do. They persevered. So we should also persevere in sharing the gospel, discern the Spirit's guidance, and continue the mission wherever we go, trusting that reliance on God enables persistence through both success and resistance. Questions? What are the criteria for being an apostle of Christ? Hmm? Perfect. Yeah. Eyewitness of the resurrected Christ and called by Jesus or called by God. What is the other meaning of the word apostle as shown in 2 Corinthians 8.23? Messenger. Messengers of the church or messenger. Before reaching Iconium, where did Paul and Barnabas come from? Huh? Huh? Pisidia and Antioch. Pisidia and Antioch. Pisidia and Antioch. Who instigated and embittered the minds of the Gentiles against the brothers? Huh? Unbelieving Jews. The unbelieving Jews. Kasi marami din naniwala eh. Marami din Jews na nang believe. Diba? Okay. So let us learn together. See you next time. And God bless and bring your friends. Mm -hmm. Or sinasadyan nyo sa siguro para maraming take out. <laughs> Joke lang po. Okay, any questions? Aside from those questions, Lana, let's pray. Lord, thank you, God, for, for the lesson. Lord, I pray that you would empower each and every one of us uh, to be able to imitate the life of Paul and Barnabas, their zeal and, uh, to preach the gospel and their love for others, and, of course, their love for Christ. So, Father in heaven, I pray that you would mightily use us as you use them in different contexts but I pray Lord God in the same result of drawing people to Christ. Father in heaven we lift this night up to you may your name be glorified in Jesus name we pray Amen Praise God po and maraming salamat po Pastor Richard ay yung nakasagot po sa tanong ni Pastor